The Senator from Ohio. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I ask you to send to dispense with a quorum call. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I ask uh, you to send to speak as if in uh, morning business for up to 10 minutes. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. I, um, I was presiding earlier today before the uh, Senator from North Carolina was and uh, listened to Senator Boxer talk about the importance of this transportation bill, this highway bill, which is, I, I underscore, I also, this week, we've seen uh, movement on extension of the payroll tax and uh, tax cut and uh, unemployment benefits, two very important things with the doctor's fix, two very important things to keep our economy moving. And just made me think back what's happened in the last couple of years. And in 2009, when President Obama, when Senator Obama became President Obama, we were losing 800,000 jobs a month in the United States of America, 800,000 jobs a month. We know what was happening, especially to manufacturing and especially in states like the presiding officers, North Carolina and my state of Ohio. Um, in fact, we had for 12 years, every single year for 12 years, from 1997 to 2009, we had lost manufacturing jobs every single year in Ohio and in the United States. But after President Obama took office, we passed the Recovery Act, we did some other things, the health care bill, all that. We've begun to see month after month after month of job growth. Not job growth that we want yet, not the kind of strong job growth we want. But for 21, 22 consecutive months, we've, we've seen more manufacturing jobs than the month before, including my state of Ohio. More manufacturing jobs every single month than the preceding month for 20, 21, 22 months in a row. And why is that? There's a lot of reasons. There are a lot of reasons. Number one is we began to put the economy on track, no longer losing 800,000 jobs a month, instead gaining manufacturing jobs every month. Uh, we, the auto rescue has, has made a huge difference in states like Ohio, but really across the country as we've seen manufacturing take off. Uh, coming out of every recession, what leads us out of recession typically is the auto industry in the Midwest and throughout the country. People are making cars, they're buying cars, they're, they're all, the, all the economic activity generated from making a car and, and, and buying a car and running a car. And in one of the untold stories, um, Madam, Madam President, is that, that in Toledo, Ohio, in Northwest Ohio, near the Michigan border, uh, the Jeep plant, the Chrysler Jeep plant, uh, Chrysler, a company that was saved from the auto rescue, would have gone into what went into bankruptcy. The restructuring and the financing by the United, by U.S. taxpayers got that company back on its feet, um, back into business making cars. But prior to the auto rescue, in, 19, in 2008, uh, auto, the, the Chrysler plant and the Jeep plant in Toledo, only 50% of the products going into a Jeep, of the components assembled in that plant in Toledo, Ohio, only 50% were American made. You know what happened now after the auto rescue? 75% of those products are American made, in uh, those components. And that's exactly the point because it's not just the companies, it's not just the companies you hear about. Honda's got a, is a, big operation in Ohio, Chrysler, GM, Ford, all big operations in Ohio, all expanding, all investing just in the last six months. Each of those four companies has announced invest, major investment dollars going into Ohio operations. It's not just those auto plants, it's the supply chain. So if, if, we're, if, if a Chrysler Jeep is made out of 75% auto parts, American parts, rather than 50% American parts. Think of the jobs that creates. Um, tires, steering wheels, locks, uh, transmissions, the engine, the fenders, all the steel, all the electronics, all the products that go into those automobiles and, and trucks. And that, Madam President, is, the, is in some many ways the untold story. Now, the problem, though, with that is that we're still seeing China the People's Republic of China, Communist China, cheating when it comes to auto parts. Uh, the auto trade, the auto parts trade deficit, a decade ago, was about a billion dollars, meaning that the U.S. bought a bill, U.S. companies bought a billion dollars in Chinese-made auto parts more than we sold to China. Um, auto parts made in this country, we had a one billion dollar deficit in auto parts today that deficit is about 800% bigger than that. It's, a, it's around $10 billion 
<laughs> that auto parts trade deficit. So, Madam President, the point of that is if we can turn that around, <laughs> if we can force the Chinese to play fair and stand up and practice trade according to our national interests, not according to some economics textbook that's, that's 20 years out of print, if we can do that, it will mean way more American jobs making auto components in steel and rubber and all those things that, that go into creation of an automobile, the assembly of an automobile in a truck. And yesterday, just 100 feet from here, uh, a group of us met with the uh, vice president of China, who will soon be the leader of that country, people predict, the people that know China well predict. And I asked him a question about that, that, um, that China doesn't play fair. They don't play fair in currency. They don't pay, play fair when it comes to subsidizing energy and water and capital and land. Um, and of course, he, he deflected the question. He didn't really answer it. I didn't expect him to. But I wanted him to know, as eight or nine of us were sitting around the table, I was the only one that really directly brought up the whole issue of, of trade and jobs and this economic relationship leveling the playing field. But that's why it is so important, Madam President, that the, the House of Representatives pass the, my China currency bill. This is legislation that the Senator from North Carolina has co-sponsored, Senator Hagan. It's legislation that Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, Republicans co-sponsored. It's legislation that Chuck Schumer in New York has co-sponsored along with Olympia, a Democrat, along with Olympia Snow, a Republican from Maine. And Debbie Stabenow, a Democrat from Michigan, and uh, Senator Sessions, a Republican from Alabama. All of us have come together. It was the largest, my, my uh, currency bill was the largest bipartisan jobs bill that the United States Senate passed in 2011. And unfortunately, Speaker Boehner in the House of Representatives is blocking it. And, and it's important that he move on that. It will have a strong bipartisan vote out of the House of Representatives, as it did for in excess of 60 votes in the United States Senate. Uh, it will mean that it works like this briefly, that with, with China cheating on currency, it means that a product made in, in Cleveland, Ohio, and sold in Wuhan, China, has a 25 minimum, some Reagan administration former officials say 40 or 50 percent, but at least a 25 percent um, currency tariff or tax that every one of our products is taxed that way, that, that, that cost is added to it when it's sold in China. Conversely, if the Chinese make something and sell it into Akron or Lima or Mansfield, Ohio, that product um, is 25% less expensive, which means that, that American companies can't really compete. There was a company in Brunswick, I was talking to the two brothers that run this company, and they were about to make a million dollar sale, and all of a sudden a Chinese competitor came in with that 25% bonus that they get because China games and cheats on the currency system. Um, they were underpriced by 20%, so that clearly doesn't work. That's why I said that to the Vice President of China about the importance of currency. It's why the House of Representatives needs to pass my legislation. Um, and it will mean that we can keep this recovery going. The, the 21 months in a row of manufacturing job growth, coupled with the extension of the payroll tax cut, coupled with the extension of unemployment benefits, coupled with the transportation bill, the highway bill, that Senator Boxer and Senator Inhofe bipartisanly are working on, coupled with the China, China standing up to the Chinese on trade enforcement and on this currency bill will mean we're gonna get this recovery, we're gonna sustain it, we're gonna grow it. It's gonna mean significant new jobs in my state of Ohio and across the country. Uh, Madam President, I, I um, yield the floor and suggest you have a civil court. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka.